Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper along with Tony Hager. Welcome to this week's edition, the holiday edition of Global Wrestling News. Oklahoma State remains undefeated, but the Cowboys got their first real test Tuesday as they traveled to Wyoming. The home team opened with an upset at 149. It was Sam Turner controlling the action on his way to a 4-3 decision over Gio Martinez. You know, Gio was that spark plug that I think that, that transfer that Okie State thought they had. I mean, they still do maybe. I mean, the, the, the travel might have you know played into this, but... I mean, that was a match that they Oklahoma State had penciled in that they were going to win. At 157, John Splaylock was unable to find his offense, falling to a 17th-ranked Archie Colgan 3-1. Wyoming would extend its lead even further at 65 as Branson Ashworth scored a pair of takedowns and a 6-2 victory over Chandler Rogers. In a back-and-forth shootout at 65, Jacoby Smith scored a late escape, a takedown, and riding time to defeat Kyle Pope 8-7. It was another wild battle at 84 as Keegan Moore used a third period reversal and two takedowns to Ed Chaz Polson and pulled the Cowboys back within three. You know, first off, I want to go back to that Ashworth math. Okay. I mean, 6-2 over Chandler Rogers. I don't think anyone saw that happening. You know, Moore's comeback win really gave uh, Wyoming a lot of hope. I think at this point in the duel, there's a lot of fans in that arena and a lot of fans that, you know, want to see Oklahoma State fall. You know, I mean, Oklahoma State versus Wyoming. So I think this kind of let fans feel like that Cinderella story was really kind of coming. I've broadcast in that uh, uh, that gym, it's loud in there, and those fans come, and they've got a lot to express and a lot of reasons to be proud of the Wyoming Cowboys. All right, Preston Wiggle put the pokes ahead, hitting three four-point near falls to defeat Cody Vigorin by Tech Fall at 197. And Derek White, well, he made it back-to-back -back bonus point victories in heavyweight. The Richard Jr. racked up five takedowns on his way to the 17-2 Tech. With all the firepower in Oklahoma State lineup, I think a lot of people overlooked this kid at 285. Yeah, I mean, who... Who is Derek White? This is a guy that I you know, haven't been keeping up on. I haven't heard the name. You know, for, for him to put up this many points at heavyweight, this isn't something you see every day. So this win should uh, you know, give him a lot of confidence going forward, and the coaches can you know, build off this uh, duel. All right, let's take a look at the lightweights. We start at 125. Nick Piccanini nearly made it three straight techs, but would have to settle for the major. 15 won the final over Drake Foster. Montori Bridges took an early six-point lead over Cade Brock, hitting a takedown and near fall just seconds into the bout. Brock would answer with four takedowns of his own, but was unable to complete the comeback. The final score, 11-10 at 133. I think no one penciled Bridges in on this match. and that, that first period going to his back, th those four points are so huge in college wrestling right now. If you can get up six points early, hard to come back. I don't care who you are. In college wrestling, that's a tough comeback to get. Let's go to 141, Tony. It was a main event if there ever was one. It was top-ranked Dean Heil against longtime rival Bryce Meredith. The two traded escapes in the second and third, so we headed to overtime with the score tied at one. Meredith rode out the first 30 seconds, then took the lead on an escape and the crowd went wild. Heil took his best shot at the buzzer, but his 55-match winning streak would come to an end. Two won the final in favor of Meredith. You know, I've, I've kind of wrestled him the same way every single time. I've, I've been really careless with my posts, and that's what he wants is those post high crotches. This time, I just told myself all day long today, don't post too much. Don't post too much. If you post and get ready, down block. And it just ended up working out for me this time. But I still didn't get takedown on him, which it really, you know, really hurts. I need to be able to get takedowns on him to win. You're not always going to be able to win in ride out. So, um, I mean, on that, it's fantastic. Nobody cares about it. But, oh, sorry. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was great. I mean, especially in front of everybody. Um, the whole crowd of Cheyenne came out, and they really supported me. And, gosh, I mean, my life's... Uh, just amazing, not even counting the wrestling, just everything. And this really shows it, uh, the family, the support, everything that will carry on with this because, I mean, quite frankly, this a win goes away pretty quick. I already kind of forgot about Reno. And um, so, I mean, that's why I'm just so blessed to have all this, my coaches, my team. My team really put on today. I, we should have won that duel. We really should have, and that's a, that's a bummer that we let that one slip because that would have been, I mean, that would have just been the greatest week ever on top of everything. So um, I'm a little bummed about that, but, Overall, man, who cares about the wins and losses? I, I came out here and put it all on the mat and put on for my family and friends, and that's, that's awesome. Well, Dean might be the best offensive wrestler in the country, but at some point he's got to let it fly. Well, everyone always brings the, you know, up how his def you know, his defense is some of the best in the country, how he's maybe a boring wrestler. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, that's really kind of what's 
given him success, so why should he change? That's his but, bread and butter. Yeah, but, I mean, this this match, it wasn't like Meredith blew him out. I don't feel like he just broke him and it was like a crazy match. I mean, it was, he had to take an escape in overtime to win it. So I just, I, I think, you know, if if he can get, how can somehow find some offense against Meredith, this will be a different story. Well, hopefully he can take something away from this. Trust his offense and stop relying on the other guy to make mistakes. Yeah, as a coach, you have to use this as a co- coaching opportunity. Anytime, I mean, 55 match win streak, sometimes – those losses can be a blessing in disguise. All right, up next, Tony Ramos joins us live to talk a little Tar Heel wrestling. You're watching GWN, powered by Pure and Clean Sports. Stay tuned. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's Pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Benavene, Benavene Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too. Well, the North Carolina Tar Heels have been on the rise since Coleman Scott took over the program trying to figure out the puzzle. Well, it turns out the extra piece to that puzzle had been Tony Ramos, three-time All-American from Iowa. We had the opportunity to catch up with Tony after a big weekend of wrestling at Nebraska, where they knocked off the 12th-ranked Cornhuskers at home. Welcome back to the show. We appreciate you taking the time. I know with practice and travel, it's not easy to, to take the time. But you guys just got back from a, a road trip, Nebraska. A uh, big dual win, and then went to to Northern Iowa. Things didn't go your way. Um, overall, overall thoughts on just the weekend and what you saw from your guys. Uh, overall, you know, it was a good weekend. Guys came out, they wrestled hard, they fought hard. Um, we saw a lot of good things, but like every dual meet, or no matter win or lose, there's some things we need to correct. I'm um, real excited for you know Kennedy Monday in that big win against Nebraska. You know, beforehand I just grabbed my set. You know, one big win can springboard your career forward and build confidence on that. And after that win, he was walking around with a lot of swagger, um, feeling good. So I'm excited to see where he goes from here. Um, you know, at the upper end, Danny Shade starting to come around again like he was at the end of the year last year. Our heavyweight, Corey Daniels, looking pretty tough, you know, finishing shots now. Um, so there's a lot of excitement moving forward. What do you think is the difference between, like, prior to the season – you know, preseason workouts to right now, what, what's been the biggest difference? Um, I think, you know, one of the biggest differences is a lot more focus training. Um, the guys are starting to buy into what we're preaching and what we've been trying to get them to do for the past, you know, year, year and a half. Um, and it helps that we have a guy like Troy Heilman who's, you know, seen great results from it. Um, you know, there's an example in the room now that guys can follow. You know, there's a template. It's not just us preaching to them, hey, you got to do this, hey, you got to do that and things are going to happen. You know, now they see if I do this or I do that, things will happen. I mean, the, um, you know, on a personal level as far as training goes, um, your, your off season, I guess you could say, outside of college coaching, um, what is your outlook, I guess, is going forward here at 61 kilograms this coming, coming year? I'm excited. Um, you know, I had my first competition at the Schultz. I didn't do exactly how I wanted it to, uh, but I got out there, got back on the mat, started competing again, new weight class. Um, ended up losing the cologne, but you know the way I look at it is the last time I lost the cologne, you know it jump started one of the best years I've had. So, you know I'm excited. Um, can't wait to get back out there and compete again. Hopefully here at the end of January in Russia. Um, 
then get our guys ready for ACC's nationals and then focusing on myself. You know, I, I got to imagine a guy like you, Tony, has, you know, he had tons of success at the college level, immediate success on the international level in the last couple of years. Things haven't gone the same, right? So yep. how have you, I guess, managed those losses and taken those to, and turned them into a positive for, you know, back to your family, back to your college kids and, and continuing to, to try to wrestle on the world level? Yeah, uh, for me, nothing changes. You know, there's going to be bumps along the way. Um, and if you just put your head down and keep going down, you know, things aren't going to be good. But um, I use them more as examples to my guys, um, you know, why this happened, why that happened. You know, you don't want this to happen in your career. Um, so I, I find ways to spin it to, you know, find the good out of it, not just for myself, but for the people around me. Um, you know, especially I've had conversations with uh, our 97-pounder Danny Shade, you know, a couple times where I told him you could do everything right, but it doesn't mean you're going to win. Uh, and it doesn't mean that the guy who beats you does everything right. You know, you just want to make sure you're giving yourself that chance, you know, where you are prepared and where you know there's nothing else you could have done and go out there and compete with your heart and hopefully the best happens. Well, going back to you know, the college team, UNC, what are the expectations right now for within the ACC and then in March at the NCAA tournament? Where do you guys want to be? Uh, you know, ACC, is, we want to win. You know, we think we got a squad that can go out there and win. We got NC State, who's very tough. Virginia Tech, who's very tough. But um, I feel our individuals are also very tough, and they're excited. And an excited and motivated team is a very scary team. Um, so that's our plans for ACC. Nationals, we want to get all 10 guys down, um, get some guys, you know, All-American this year. I think we can have three, four, maybe five. And I'm looking to get, you know, one or two finalists in there. Um, people might call me crazy, but, you know, I think with the guys that we have, we can do that. Tony, we appreciate the time as always, and uh, we wish you the best of luck on the college scene and then uh, personally at uh, 61 kilograms. Thank you. What's been the difference here, Tony, at UNC? I'm feeling something going on in the Carolinas. Well, I mean, I think they, they're just a different mindset when Coleman got on on board, and it's been four years now, five years even with the recruits coming in. So I think uh, the, the biggest difference, I think, in the – in the college landscape is just age right now. I think the younger you are, the the most more able you're able to relate to the the college athletes, the the high school athletes, and I feel like that recruiting is the the big difference maker for North Carolina going forward. I get you. I get you. All right, we'll take a quick time out. After the break, we'll hear from the youngest world champion bull rider in history. Bull rider? Well, I guess what we'll give you is which sport paved his way to history. That's next. GWN powered by Fairway Food Stores. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. Pureandcleansports.com. 
presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's Pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Recently, USA Wrestling's national team performance manager, Cody Bickley, caught wind that the youngest world champion bull rider had a history in the sport of wrestling. Jess Lockwood wrestled from age 5 to 16 before he switched his focus to bull riding. Last week, Lockwood was invited to attend practice at the OTC to meet some of his idols. Here's a look inside Lockwood's time at the Olympic Training Center. We got 2017 PBR Professional Bull Riding World Champ Jess Lockwood at the OTC. Jess, tell us what you're doing out here. Um, I got an invite uh, by Cody Bickley and the rest of the crew to come down and train and just kind of meet all the guys and be around it. I used to be a former wrestler from the time I was five years old till 16. Then I stopped to pursue bull riding and really focus on that, but just really meeting everyone. This is awesome. So um, you're out here, you, our whole national team is out here, we got some big names. Um, who's been the most exciting person that you've met so far? Probably David Taylor, he's my favorite. <laughs> but meeting Kyle Dake and Kyle Snyder as well as Jordan Burroughs, uh, yeah, there's no words, I'm kind of, I'm starstruck really. Have you guys been able to kind of swap stories or anything about training or, or championship mentality or anything like that since you've been here with these guys? Yeah, these guys are great, you know, uh, they're true, humble athletes, champions. Uh, you wouldn't know uh, they're great at what they do unless they uh, someone told you. They're just humble, but they're great to talk to and share stories with. They're open-minded and love to learn about what I do, and I ask a bunch of questions love to learn about what they do. Can you tell us a little bit about what your day has looked like here? Um, woke up, got breakfast, uh, 8 o'clock meet, team meeting, met everyone that flew in from Iran and just got here, um, 9 to 11 practice, lifted after that for a while, uh, then after that was recovery, steam room, sauna, hot tub, cold tub, and then uh, now this practice, it's a full day. Freestyle head coach Bill Zadig, we had Jess Lockwood here, PBR world champ, um, talk about what it was like having him around the guys today. Yeah, it was exciting, um, you know, uh, I think Excellence begets excellence, and anytime you can have people that are doing great things uh, in your sport, in another sport, in, in another field of life, um, it, it's good to be around each other and learn. And, and you know what I've what I've said while Jess has been here is uh, you uh, you might see the the differences is a little more uh, obvious, but what's really powerful is when you learn the similarities. The the balance that he has in his, in his personality, his confidence, uh, the you know mature attitude that he kind of uh, takes in perspective of his career, and so uh, it's really cool to see uh, to see him and get to know him a little bit. Um, you know, he and I share a little unique uh, background uh, with wrestling, but also being from Montana. So uh, you know, us Montana people have a lot of pride, and I'm, I'm proud to know him and and. Uh, you know, like our guys uh, that I get, I say all the time, and, and they're great wrestlers, but they're better people. And Jess seems to exemplify that. I mean, he's he's certainly a great cowboy and a great bull rider, um, but he's just an amazing kid, real down to earth and uh, great attitude. And, uh, you know, growing up wrestling, he idolized some of these guys in this room, and so you know, our guys learn about him, and now they're his fans. And so it was just a lot of fun to uh, to share some time and get to know somebody like that. And, and uh, you know, I think Jess made a lot of new fans in the wrestling world um, that are going to be following his bull riding career. And hopefully, he continues on. You know, he's in a he's in a similar place that we are as a team. He won the world title, and he wants to to do a lot more in his career. And and we've done well, and uh, we want to do a lot more. So uh, you know, it's it's not going to be easy. And, and so uh, yeah. Great, great experience. 
What was the trade-off like between him and the athletes today, and, and how do you think he, he impacted them? You know, they had a lot of fun, really, and he talked a little bit. His balance is unbelievable. You know, there's some stuff that's been out on social media where he jumping up on a on a ball and, and spinning on it, and his, you know, just his coordination, but that core strength and everything. So, I mean, really, it was bouncing ideas off of, off of each other. He got a chance to spend time with our nutritionist. Uh, he, that was something he wanted to do. Uh, you know, working out in our recovery center and our strength room down there. So, I mean, he was very excited to have the opportunity to not only be around our guys, but just to get a little bit more of an idea on some things maybe that he can put into his training. And that's where it was a win-win. All right, Quick Hits is up next. Short time out. Stay tuned. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. As we first reported just a few weeks ago, Presbyterian College has accepted an invitation to join the Southern Conference in the fall of 2019. The South Carolina-based school will simultaneously launch the first women's program in Division I history. Former American University and Oklahoma Sooners head coach Mark Cody has been named the Director of Operations and will guide PC on its journey to Division I. It's a big leap for Presbyterian College and our sport, Tony. You know, time will tell, you know, if he can get D1 talent to come in there. I'd just be really curious to see who they actually are recruiting. I mean, he thinks that they can compete in the top 15, top 10 within five years. I mean, no offense, but that, that's going to be very difficult, I feel, at the D1 level. I mean, first got to start the program, get people there. I think that's a, the biggest hurdle. You know, they have scholarships to give, so that, that definitely will help his, the, his side of things. I think, honestly, I think the, the women's side is where they're going to have the most success. They need, you know, right out of the box, anyway. Yeah, right out, right out of the box, I think they're going to be able to get recruits in there, and they're going to be able to compete. I mean, they're they're going to be able to feel the team a lot easier on the women's side than the men's. From, from my perspective. All right, so while I was at Grapple at the Garden in New York, you talked with Mark Cody at great length. What did you take away from the conversation? I think just stepping away from the sport and believing in, in his faith that his his place in the sport would, would be, he would come. You know, he's he had some time to spend with family. He got to coach a little bit of high school wrestling. So I feel like that was a good time to just kind of rejuvenate himself. All right, if this university fields its D1 women's program, as they say they will do, and they're the only D1 wrestling program for women. Are they the national champions? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess technically, yes. But, I mean, women's wrestling and how they work, it, you know, all the divisions are, are kind of together in the WCWA. So there's not really, you know, women's wrestling has a long ways to go before I think we can have, you know, an actual tournament with Division One wrestling or the actual, you know, NAIA national championships for, for women's wrestling. we got a long ways to go, but this is definitely a good step. All right, led by Kennedy Monday and Troy Heilman, the North Carolina Tar Heels took out the Cornhuskers of Nebraska 22-14. It was the Huskers' second home loss of the weekend after getting blown out by North Carolina State. So, Tony, three things I want to talk about. Is NC State legit? North Carolina might be the most improved team in the country. That's my second point. And Nebraska seems like they've just lost the will to win. Your thoughts? 
Well, NC State has always been legit, in my opinion. I feel like they're highly underranked here going into into this season. This really just proves it, or maybe just Nebraska isn't as good as we thought they were. So I think time will tell here after after uh, the Christmas break there on NC State. UNC faced a weak and young Nebraska team, then lost to UNI, which you know UNI is not really not a full strength either. So I feel like they're a little overranked. So uh, there's a lot to be told about this UNC team. Nebraska has just, I think, you know, to your third point, I just feel like they're lacking some leadership on this team. Just a bad mixture of, you know, old and young, and th those those guys at the end are kind of alpha males. And from my outside perspective, I feel like maybe the the, the best, um, you know, the, they're not leading this team the way they should. I thought with Jordan Burroughs there and James Green and, and so much talent in the coaching ranks, I thought they would be attracting the top talent in the country. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are just young and haven't matured yet to the point of being to beat a team like NC State. They've got a great recruiting. I mean, the, the, the class right now, the redshirt freshmen, the freshmen, and then their recruiting classes that are coming in are great. So I feel like, you know, they're in a, they're in a rebuilding period right now. Nebraska will be back. Yeah, but you know what? Nebraska is not going anywhere. I promise you that. But Mark Manning is not a guy that's willing to settle for a rebuilding years. So there's some disappointment there, some things they need to work on. And I guarantee you they're in the room doing just that. The Northwestern Wildcats have proved to 6 and on the season with wins over both CSU Bakersfield and Cal Poly. Seven Wildcats won both of their bouts, including the 12th ranked Sebastian Rivera, who remains undefeated in his rookie year. Northwestern stock is pretty high, Tony. Are you buying, selling, or is it too soon to tell? I would say selling and too soon to tell. I mean, Northwestern, very smart on how they're scheduling. Um, I think they're trying to get some confidence in this you know, new team, new coaching staff, really a rebuilding um, to get, you know, get some quality dual wins under their place. Now when we get to the Big Tens, that's when the real – the real story is going to be told. Well, I think you're right. The Big Ten schedule is that's where it's all told. Winning at Northwestern surely is not easy. They don't have all the resources. They're in academic requirements that uh, perhaps aren't at other institutions. They're in the top conference in the country. Unbelievable job by Matt Storniolo and his staff overall, though. I agree. I mean, not a lot of schools are like Northwestern when it comes to recruiting, but there's other schools having success that do have some of those requirements. So, uh, I, again, I go back to you know new coaching staff and rebuilding. They're still on that rebuilding program. All right. The big news, of course, over the weekend is how is Chance Marsteller doing? And Marsteller continued a stellar season, securing two tech balls and a pin at the Bald Eagles duels. The redshirt junior is now 19-0 and and will put his undefeated record on the line at the Southern Scuffle. I think this is, a, this is one of those great stories second chance, third chance, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I, until he gets uh, through a season, I'm not buying it. I feel like, you know, we've had some, he's had some mistakes and um, the, there is, you know, that good story out there, right? People are saying that he's riding the straight and arrow, but until he can get to the NCAA championships, I'm not buying. You know, Lock Haven is located in a part of Pennsylvania that's kind of remote. Not a lot to do there other than go to school and wrestle. So i got to believe some of those things have been taken away from him that might have offered him an opportunity yep. to make bad decisions. Remember, Chance was the top recruit in the country coming out of high school, and he's always had the tools to be elite. Yeah, you know, that might be really the reason why he kind of got in this spot. And when you get to college, you're, you are the number one recruit. And you're, when you get in those college rooms, you're not the guy anymore. So maybe he felt like he had to... Uh, do things outside of wrestling to get some attention, and that's really what kind of got us in trouble. All right, sadly, Tony, we're out of time. For all of us at Takedown Studios, we hope all of you have a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. We'll be back next week right here for Global Wrestling News.